President Trump's executive order on immigration has dominated the news cycle, and it may have something to do with charged headlines like these. Slate magazine wrote, quote, of course it's a Muslim ban. Rolling Stone said Donald Trump's Muslim ban makes us less American. And Vox wrote this, quote, Trump's Muslim ban is a huge gift to ISIS. So is that designation fair? The administration says unequivocally no. When he first announced it, he said Muslim ban. He called me up. He said, put a commission together. Show me the right way to do it legally. And what we did was we focused on, instead of religion, danger. The right. air areas of the world that create danger for us, which is a factual basis, not a religious basis. This is not, I repeat, not a ban on Muslims. Clearly it's not. <laughs> It's not a Muslim ban. It's not in any way associated with religion. All right. So let's get back to our panel uh, to discuss this. You, you just heard all of those quotes. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I know Darren wants to pounce on what Diane just said a little while ago. <laughs> but, you know, the fact is, you know, we had eight years of an Obama administration who was pretending that there was zero problems with regard to Islamic terrorism, problems in the Middle East. He completely turned a blind eye to it. Now, people might have some issues with the nuances or the machinations that are going on regarding um, President Trump's new immigration policy, but at least he's actually trying to do something. He's actually addressing a real problem, and it's a, it's a serious problem. Uh, I actually I totally disagree with my neighbor over I'm here. Go ahead. Yeah, I totally disagree with my buddy over here. You so see, sorry. you got to understand yeah. one thing. First of all, President Obama never turned a blind eye to the Middle East. Okay, Yemen came in during the time of President Obama. He never gave he, it a critical he, look, though, either. He gave a critical he look. He did not give it he a gave, critical he look. He tried to do whatever he can do. The challenge over here is you're labeling it. You're go labeling ahead, it. Not only are you okay, labeling it, but Deshaun, you're also... you have the floor right now. Go ahead. You Not only are you labeling this, but you're also saying, oh, but the, but the Christians are allowed. And, and this has been said, but the Christians are allowed. These are refugees. These people, have their countries have been bombed, right? Your country, thank God, our country has not been bombed. Right? These people need to get out. They need a refuge. And I we guess were, one, we were, of the thing, and, one of the and, issues that's raised by process, that, though, and, and I want this, people to weigh in on this. Hold on one second. Is you know why we didn't help after the red line was crossed, right? You know, we, we weren't. Now there's all this need for compassion for these individuals, but yet when they were crying out to us, as you say, and being killed by the hundreds of thousands in their countries, um, we did not really do as much as we could have to help, some would say. But the fact is, if you look at a lot of these countries over there, let's talk about Syria specifically. You know, they've got, had the civil war going on now for, you know, quite some time, almost five years. Um, the Christians were the ones that are being probably the most persecuted there in that country. They've been driven out of their homes by ISIS. Um, all, the, all the minority groups there had been pushed out, bullied, attacked by ISIS and other groups, fundamentalist groups over there. I don't, I don't have a problem if Ms. we decide to bring Christians from Syria over here to the United States. I'm sorry, I disagree completely because the biggest people that are subject to terror by ISIS are Muslims. Mm -hmm. And they are victims of terrorism. Well, and any about victim sheer numbers versus percentages. No, no, I'm talking about worldwide. Muslims have been killed more and attacked more by ISIS than any other group. And would they deserve a right in this country to be... Re seek refuge from terrorism, and that's what America. No, 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 no. I wouldn't doubt. Wait, 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 I wouldn't okay. doubt. Okay. Hold on. It is. All right. I mean, that raises the question. You know, then, then why wouldn't Muslims want to have the greatest protection of our borders, so that we can make sure that anybody who does, you know, want to cause harm is not able to get in to hurt more Muslims? I agree with you on that, but I think the thing is, is that our vetting process is very, very con concise and very, very thorough. If you are a refugee, everything that you go under for the two-year process of being vetted, that alone is, has proven to be a wonderful model, not to mention no refugee has ever struck back here in America against you know, America. Go, Peter. go ahead, Peter. I disagree with her. Uh, the question over here is as to whether the president has the constitutional power to temporarily suspend immigration to the United States. And if you go back to the 1952 Act, Immigration Nationality Act, the Congress specifically authorizes the president to do exactly what he's doing if there is a national security concern. I came to the United States as a refugee myself with my family. We were vetted properly. We submitted to fingerprints and background investigation and blood tests and you name it. We needed America. America didn't need us as, us as refugees. We needed America. We want this nation to remain as safe as possible. 
What the president is doing right now is what President Carter did in 1979 with the Iranian crisis, when we had the, the hostage crisis. President Obama did the exact same thing in 2011, when we had two, two refugees from Iraq. From Iraq, we had two refugees who were investigated by the FBI Jessica. that they had blood on their hands when they killed Americans in Iraq I and they were arrested saying. here. Uh, Jessica, go ahead. I absolutely hear what you're saying. This is a narrative coming out of the right wing at this moment that this is exactly what Obama did in 2011. There were two Iraqi refugees who were building a bomb in Kentucky, Bowling Green. Not a massacre, though. But, and but what they happened were arrested was by the FBI. We had a slowdown. There was, not, there was not one month where the U.S. stopped taking Iraqi refugees. The process was slowed down, but it was not halted. Well, Martha, Absolutely not. Right? And the intention. The question is, 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 is it, I got a question. I got a question becomes, over here for is him. It, is it inhumane to ask people to wait 90 days? You know, no, is, that, is that an unreasonable to thing that, to ask point. for? My question. What we're seeing is a shift in our thinking. Since 9-11, we've been reactive in our approach to national security. His uh, rolling out wasn't necessarily very smooth, but it's proactive, and we need to change our thinking. I think proactive is the way to approach terror. Mm -hmm. He is taking proactive steps, and I think that that's important. Um, so, Martha, yes, so let me tell you. Quickly, right. so last thought, then we're going to come so right back. Ste stepping back, leadership matters. Leadership in the Muslim world matters as well. Right now, the narrative on Islam is defined by Daesh and ISIS. I want to look at proven models versus shallow theories on how to address this. As a Muslim, I want to keep America safe. I thank Carl and others for the service that they've given, but we've got to look at proven models. Proven models like the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, where he's a worldwide leader, His Holiness Mirza Masrur Ahmed, has led people in 206 nations with zero acts of terrorism. So in order to keep America safe, and he has said, let me tell you what he said, a Muslim leader, he said, our mosques are open. Transparency is important to trust. Mm -hmm. and, and opening up and, and living in a democracy. So I think if we understand Islam, mm -hmm. if we truly as Americans understand what r true Islam is versus these shallow theories and this misinterpretation, we will be able to keep America safe. And that's the conversation I want to have. All right, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back.